Hey guys, so today we're going to do a little bit of old and a little bit of new and it's going to be fun. We're going to do an adventure today. So we're going to combine some techniques that I've presented on and made videos on in the past along with something that's a little bit new and uh, you know, I, I think we're going to have fun along the way. I've never done this. I've seen it done, but I think it's high time that we update the how to make a ribbed foam wing. So what we're going to get into here is it's, it's a combination between a built up rib foam wing like I showed previously, only we're not going to cut out each one of the ribs. What we're going to do is we're going to combine my techniques of hot wire that I've shown on a couple of builds. Uh, the Bugatti build is a great example. And we're going to combine that with uh, some techniques that I showed how to do on my uh, template video how to make these little guys. And uh, I'm not gonna cover on how I make the templates before, but I'm using the airfoil from a Carl Goldberg Eagle II. Standard flat bottom airfoil, it's very stable. Um, I'm just using it as an example. So, uh, you know, it, it just for simplicity's sake, you can easily use a, uh, a, a semi-symmetrical or a fully symmetrical airfoil but uh, I, I'm excited to do this. So let's, let's show you what we're getting into here. I've, I've made a box here, this uh, strange little box thing. And well, what, you're, what you're actually looking at here is <laughs> sort of a spar. And this uh, half inch foam here is just, you know, pick foam from the, from the, um, from the hardware store. And uh, the rest of this foam is just paper taken off of the flight test foam. Uh, dollar store foam would work just fine, Ross foam, um, pretty much any foam in, that you can easily take the paper off. And as you can see, I've, I've measured, um, I, I've taken my, my uh, printout here and, and measured where I want my uh, leading edge and my trailing edge, how long those need to be, and made this box. And this is just two inches, two inches thick, and um, we're going to get into hot wire cutting this. Now, the what I'm, what I'm going to say is, again, I've never done this, and I'm excited to try. I was under the impression that you couldn't hot wire cut through Gorilla Glue, and... I've seen people do this, so we're gonna learn together. I'm gonna, it, this may turn out to be a good hot wire cut. It may not. Uh, we're, we're gonna do it together, all right? So let's get to it. So what we're looking at here, guys, is uh, the basic setup where I've got my template. I've got two nails holding it into the spar. It's the bulk of the foam, just so that it doesn't rotate too much. Um, if you're using a semi-symmetrical, I would highly recommend you put locator nails on each side again just to make sure it doesn't move and that way you can go ahead and uh, flip the the panel over to to hot wire cut the other side i'm using a an old battery charger that i've got here for my hot wire setup but um, my bow is also pretty standard i mean this equipment is pretty well documented across the internet but i'll include an article to uh, an ft article link in the description below if you're just getting into this so with that said, I'm going to make my first cut. I'm going to make sure my path is clear of obstructions. And yep, I'm going to be able to do that just fine. All right, so again, I'm resting my wire right on the leading edge that I created for my template. And I've already powered up and tested the wire, so I know my setting is right. So I'm going to turn that on. Let the wire get hot, rest it, and we're cutting. It's a little bit of resistance through the Gorilla Glue, but not bad. So now we're getting to the spar. 
And that's cutting a little bit differently than the flight test foam. But not a challenge at all with the Gorilla Glue at the joints. Okay, now I'm pivoting the bow up so that it doesn't interfere with my weight. It's my masonry level. Heavy steel just to weigh things down in addition to the sand. That's it. All right, so we're gonna take the weight off here. Let's see what we have. Oh, that's beautiful. It's perfectly cut. Absolutely perfectly, perfectly cut. That's awesome. All right, guys, so um, I've, I've taken a look at this off film uh, and, you know, it, it seems a little, you know, wobbly and uh, especially this top part is, but that that's OK. That's OK. That's expected. Um, the main thing is that it's uh, rigid enough to be put sandwiched back together like so. Um, so the next step, I've, I've also prepared these two sheets. So one is going to go on the bottom and one is going to go on the top, but between there. So um, if you're going to be doing a symmetrical or semi-symmetrical airfoil, uh, you're going to want to make note of this. Um, you know, you, you, you're going to want to pre-curl your foam here. So we're, we're going to sheet the top and the bottom. And, you know, before before you would sheet, you would do like, uh, you know, take a, a brass tube and you could cut holes all the way through. Um, you could uh, put in your spar on the bottom, you know, cut a, 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 a little trough for it for either a carbon fiber rod or a fiberglass rod. Either one will work just fine. Um, but uh, yeah, so what we're going to do next is we're going to put glue all along these spots. I'm going to put that down on this and then I'm going to glue the top and then I'm going to put this on and then the top, this, I'm, you'll see, you'll see. So let's get to work. Again, I'm using my favorite white Gorilla Glue. It is the best. I do not prefer the brown, uh, it's just my personal preference. I like how the white works. Okay, and I'm not going to glue this leading edge part because I'm going to cut that off later. All right, good enough for now. That's our, our wing bottom. All right, so here's, I guess, the tricky part. Okay, so I'm gonna line it up here with the leading edge first and then sort of roll it onto the spar. I'm gonna put that on top and I'm gonna line the frame up on top of it. I'm using sandbags. This is just regular like play sand that you can get at a hardware store and I have double Ziploc bagged it so that it doesn't leak all over the place. All right, and then 
just to make sure that leading edge is, is glued on, I'm going to put that weight down here. I'm going to leave this for an hour, two hours maybe. Uh, kind of depends on what my family needs right now. I'm just going to let this sit and cure, and then I'll come back and we'll have a look. And we're back. So let's pull this apart. See what we got. All right, so you've got a little bit of bubbling out uh, of the glue, and that's pretty easy to pick apart. You can use like tweezers or something to, to pick that off, just like that. Um, you can even cut it off if you want to. Um, but I, I am super stoked about that. So um, next thing we're gonna do is sort of trim. Let's do a rough trim here, and all right. So with this, you can just hold your blade nice and level. Cut flush. Do that again, shall we? And then you can take a block sander and sand that perfectly flat, and then use a piece of wood for like an aileron, or you can build up like triangle stock, or uh, maybe you could, if you hot wire it further, you know, you could you could make them meet more, and then. Just sand and bevel the trailing edge if that's what you want to do. Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I am going to cut off here and I am not going to cut through the top skin, only through the bottom skin. Because what you can do is use a piece of wood to make a leading edge. Now obviously this is a little bit too small. But the point is that I could uh, get a, a piece of wooden dowel from like the Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, I think this is quarter inch dowel, so maybe half inch dowel. And I take a little piece of that and wrap some sandpaper around it and you can sand in a groove in the front and then just glue that dowel directly and that becomes your leading edge. And then you can use spackle. I prefer the 3M Patch Plus Primer. This stuff is awesome. Get it at Walmart. It's cheap and it doesn't shrink. And it sands really easy, hardens up really easy with uh, water-based polyurethane. You can use that to blend in the transition between the dowel and your foam. And then from there, you have a couple of options. I've seen people um, take this wing and then they will sheet it with balsa. And from the balsa, then they'll do like a light finish coat of fiberglass cloth. Or I've even seen people just fiberglass right over top of this. Um, do do some filling of the weave, but I mean this is already quite quite strong. That is amazing. And then even the torsional rigidity, like trying to flex these corners, that is that is amazing, amazing work. Um, with way better than what hot glue would do let me tell you all right so why would you want to do it this way the the biggest one is clearly weight savings you've got all of these hollow cavities that uh, are just empty they're full of air um, so you're saving a lot of weight but at the same time you're maintaining maintaining a lot of structural strength 
and it's just from the foam. It's not necessarily from any additional materials. Now, that said, you can easily add materials to it to make it even stronger. Uh, like I said, you can add spars to it. You can cover it in wood. Uh, like a balsa skin is going to add so much strength to this. And on top of that, there are people that have observed outgassing of the foam when just glassing over top of the foam. So there's that as well to consider. So there's all sorts of things that, that this sort of opens us up to. Um, really bigger. I mean, th this thing weighs like nothing. Weighs nothing. And I, I like, I, I remember hot wiring solid pink foam and I am just amazed at how st how strong this is and I, I, I'm I'm a believer <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, once I get done this whole balsa thing I'm probably going to be using this on my next build it's phenomenal I'm absolutely amazed and this is just you know just a couple of strips of cheap foam and some good old-fashioned Gorilla Glue you know now the disadvantage is it's seemingly a little bit more complicated and tedious to put together. I would say no, um, especially if you look at the previous method that I covered where you're cutting out individual airfoil shapes. It's really no more tedious. In fact, it's probably less tedious than that because you're only doing one set of templates for each end of the wing panel that you're making. From that perspective, yeah, but I mean, once you do the hot wire cut, you're done and then working with the foam as a sheeting i mean it's 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 easily bendable uh you could easily be doing um uh, elliptical wings with this so i mean it just makes life a little bit nicer here for building and faster and cheaper and lighter oh my gosh i can't i can't get over how much lighter these are so really that's that's what you're talking about and you trick Again, these th I made this on camera. I did not make this uh, before I started filming. I never tried this technique before, but I had the basics. I had basics of working with Gorilla Glue, working with foam in general, working with a hot wire cutter. Um, so all of these basic things, they build up to being able to try new techniques. And that's all this is take old techniques, try them in a new different way, and we, we come up with something a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you guys get to enjoy this technique as well. I had a blast doing this, and I, you know, I have no doubt that it's going to make some, at least my airplanes, if not yours, an even better flying work of art.